Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Farms in the mountains of North Carolina. Tonight, we're going to be checking out another Redicus radio. This is the TR638. Nice little conventional old school, you know, AM, FM setup here. I'm looking forward to opening this. So let's get right into it. It is marked for the U.S. market. And, oh yeah, so we got some nice setup here. power cord here. Not a whole lot in the box, but it does have quite a manual, I'll say that for it. So here it is. And it is um, in several languages here, but as far as the specs, holy cow. English pages 1 through 13. So let's take a look here. Product appearance, functional. The TF, it does take a TF card or a micro SD. 256 gigabyte, wow, supports WMA, WAV, wave, and FLAC, so um, hmm. I don't see MP3 in there, but perhaps that's one of those that I'm not seeing there. Has a sleep timer, auto scan, and a manual scan. Tuning, min-max, USB, oh cool, so we have USB input as well. AM is 520 to 1710 with 10 kilohertz step, so US market. FM is 64 to 108, and shortwave is 2.3 to 23 megahertz, so pretty good coverage there. Now, sometimes you don't get the lower bands on shortwave, but this one includes that. Headphone jack, timer, nice. Oh, Bluetooth mode as well, so you can use this as a Bluetooth speaker. And a time, it has a clock in there as well, an alarm clock, backlighting. I mean, it's a pretty nice little radio. Very cool. Okay, as far as the radio itself, it's uh, it's it's the old school, old school leg radio. I'm, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm old. And when I grew up, there was always an AM, FM, a GE super radio in our garage. My dad loved to listen to the AM stations as a kid in the 70s and 80s. Uh, that was kind of cool. And so this this reminds me of that, the old Panasonic, Sony, GE, those models there. So pretty nice. Uh, it does take conventional batteries. It is not rechargeable batteries. Looks like double A's and four of them will get this thing fired up. Some people like to have a nice rechargeable battery. I'm one of them. But a lot of people think for survival needs or for prepping needs that it's better to have conventional A cell, B cell, C cell, D cell, whatever. There's no B cell, I guess. Well, maybe there is, but you know what I mean. C cell or D cell batteries like the conventional old school radios. And so for those people, this might be one you want to add to your preps. Of course, on this side, we do have a regular old-fashioned plug-in for the 120 outlet and a nice big antenna up here on top. It's kind of snapped into place. And I would say that's about 20, 28 inches, maybe? 28 inches for antenna height. Uh, on this side, our tuning dial. And it's a min-max, so I would imagine that's our volume. Then we do have a TF card and a USB in right there. And on the very bottom, a little hard to see, a uh, regular old-fashioned or earphone jack for you. And on the front, fairly good-sized speaker here. Our select AM, FM, shortwave, TF, on, off switch. And then we do have, like, looks like a function button and a lock button, clock button, and it looks like a contrast button, timer, and this must be, like, to access the folders on a TF card play pause and up and down so a lot of the features on the front uh, are with a clock or with a timer or with using it as a USB or Bluetooth speaker where the stuff on the side and the main switch here on and off and these bottom switches will be more of the AM FM shortwave features and functions so <coughs> excuse me so I would say nice again let's go ahead it does have a nice little LCD display here as well so let's go ahead and plug this thing in it is the afternoon on a weekend, so maybe, I'm sorry, I wish it was the weekend. It's a, not a weekend. But we'll go ahead and see what kind of wonderful things we can pick up on the bands. Of course, I have to be careful for copyright violations, so we'll have to limit the amount of music we play. But that's okay, because there's still plenty of stuff on the air. Let's do it. Alrighty, let's go. We're going to turn this thing on. Oh, nice. Nice big readout well, there. They are the only children's hospital in the region. You know, they uh, cover 29 counties in four states. That estimates out to about uh, 
200,000 children per year that they serve. I'm not even familiar with this channel, so it's picking up the FM side of things pretty good. I'm going to turn this down. We'll roll down to the bottom. Usually I can catch my... I might as well roll up and roll around. But uh, we can usually catch some uh, talk radio down on the bottom of the band here. Ooh, 64. So we're going way down. So this is set for uh, European market, even though it says U.S., but it's capable of getting well past where we're capable of getting. Oh, it has memories. Absolutely not. And so this is something that we should be cautious about overgeneralizing because remote learning is not anyone's first choice and it shouldn't be. But um, what really is remarkable about how they structure this program was that this is a so family pretty good quality, a little tinny, I would say, but to think of it as online learning, at least in a passive way. Sir is so a, a clear signal. I'm going to move my microphone down closer to the radio. On your cabinets. There She's we go. A freelance education reporter. Her piece in the MIT Technology Review. Cool. Well, let's switch on over to AM around here. I don't get a ton of AM stations, but it's worth a shot. And you can hear that in, in, uh, interference there, that noise there. I have a cell tower across the way. I filed a complaint with the FCC recently. Something is happening across the way there on the mountaintop that is causing that kind of an issue. All right, so let's roll through it. And of course, you can scan as well. Sometimes 1210. Now let's try 1290. And our other local station, well, local, still 30, 40 miles away, would be 1450. Yeah. So not a strong receiver on AM, but again, listen. You can hear that interference coming in from that tower, so that, that might be partially to blame. Not a whole lot I can do about that. That's something new that has popped up. All right, well, let's switch over to, not Bluetooth. <laughs> we'll go to shortwave here. And we're going to roll down and see what we can find. There should be a couple of decently strong signals coming in this time of day. So there's a station that's kind of fading in and out. Cool. Let's keep on going. Of course, you all can hear the. Uh, you can hear that interference pretty bad even on the shortwave bands, but nice strong signal. Ninety-nine fifty picking up a weak signal. Another station there at ninety-six eighty-five, ninety-six eighty. A little bit of, uh, I would say, adjacent channel interference. Another channel there coming in. So some strong channels coming in across the U.S. here right now, this time of day. Um, and I do apologize. Cool. Uh, but most of all, when those kids take the drugs, I blame the coaches for some. So a lot of stuff coming in. It's actually picking up pretty good. To the sacred man broadcast, you are about to see that And I could keep scrolling through. I'll maybe pick out one or two more stations, but you get the idea. If the interference wasn't coming in this time of day from that uh, tower across the way, I'd be picking up these channels with a lot less background noise, a lot less interference. That being said, that's not that's not a fault of the radio. That's just a fault of my location. Really been a kind of a bummer that's just popped up in the last week here. Doesn't seem to affect uh, CB band, thankfully. And uh, and some of the ham bands are still wide open, but you know it, it does come and go throughout the day. It's kind of a weird situation. Not sure 
what they changed. That tower's been there for years, but something obviously changed to have that come up. But uh, yeah, as this thing continues to roll through, I'll talk about the fact that we do have the, you know, the ability to turn that light on and off. Do we want the brightness level? We do have a timer. Again, you have the ability to play songs and do stuff there. And uh, well, we'll go into here. We have Bluetooth mode, right, that we can choose. And so happen to land on a chill station. <laughs> well, I guess that'll do it, my friends. It's a pretty simplistic radio. It's also not a very expensive one. But it does have the ability of, you know, hey, plug this into the wall outlet, run it off of AA batteries in case of a storm. So it has some features and functions that you might find useful should you have a power outage or want to take something like this to the beach. Fairly compact and certainly easy enough to fit anywhere you need it to be. <laughs> That'll do it for today, my friends. I'll leave a link to where you can pick one of these things up. And until next time, take care.